I'm going to open this video with a sweet Danny Way graphic because he is the subject of this video today. <laughs> so I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen this graphic before. It's pretty fucking cool uh, with the you know misspellings, the message behind the graphic, uh, and just the simple fact that it's a Plan B board. Um, I don't know anybody in the last five years who has bought a Plan B board or skated a Plan B board. I'm not sure who still skates Plan B boards besides uh, maybe the pros themselves. Um, nonetheless, it is an interesting graphic, and uh, if anybody <laughs> can get me one of these boards, I will hang it up on my wall. <laughs> it is it is super cool. Uh, so anyway, let's get right into it. All right. I'm going to go through all the people that were involved in this incident. I'm going to start with Josh Swindle. Um, he was found guilty and convicted of murder in 1995 for this incident. And he spent nearly 20 years in prison. He got out in 2012. Now, this interview on Muckmouth um, takes place, I believe, just right after Swindle got out of prison. So this is in 2012. I believe uh, this interview is really good, actually, too, if you guys uh, read it. So this is in 2014. This is a few years after uh, Josh got out. Um, but yeah, it's a good interview. I read I read through the whole thing, and uh, it's pretty interesting. So the way Josh tells the story is um, him, Danny Way, and this other guy, Steve Mateus, were at a bar. This is in 90, 1995. They were at a bar in Azusa and there was a private party going on at the bar and Danny went up to Josh Swindle and said hey this guy keeps coming on to me um, Danny Way was probably offended because I don't know whatever but the guy kept coming on to Danny Way according to Danny and the victim's name is Keith Ogden this is the guy who was coming on to Danny and then who would eventually end up dead that night what happened was josh swindle went up to keith and walked him out of the bar supposedly told him it was a private party and told him to leave or that he's going to get beat up now <laughs> it says josh says i didn't threaten him personally and then <laughs> directly before that says I told him to leave or he's going to get beat up <laughs> so that's a pretty that's pretty conflicting right there um but anyway so Josh Swindle goes on to say how you know it was okay to be homophobic back in the day or whatever uh blah 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 this isn't a gay bar he came jo or Keith Ogden came back in to the bar and Josh said that he once again escorted him outside because there was no official security. By that time, Josh Swindle was drunk and he threatened him. He, he already threatened him before, but whatever. He says, still nothing physical took place. An hour or so goes by, we hear a fight out front. Josh walks out of the bar and sees Danny Way out cold, bleeding from the mouth. Someone said that someone sucker punched Danny. Josh Swindle later found out Danny had actually sucker punched Keith Ogden and then someone else came up behind Danny Way and, and hit him. So Josh goes to find Keith Ogden with, with intention to beat him up. Josh Swindle says, and what he didn't know at the time, I'm not sure if this is actually true or not, but this is what Josh says. So apparently... Keith Ogden, the victim, was suffering from a pre-existing brain injury, and he left uh, L.A. County Medical Center the day before uh, against medical advice. And I guess he had a giant hematoma in his brain, and the doctors were debating whether or not to drill a hole in his head to relieve the pressure on his brain. So that that is a contributing factor into why Keith Ogden died. Maybe, maybe not. I'm not sure, but it could be a pretty big one. Uh, they said they don't know. They didn't know about that. I don't know how they could. Um, 
but still the the thing is that josh went outside with the intention to beat up this man now there are tons and tons of incidents of people getting in fights and someone dying it's 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 crazy you can i mean you can really you can really fuck someone up by just beating them up there's so many instances of people getting knocked out hitting their head on the fucking concrete and they end up dying or they end up being paralyzed or having to really not talk walk whatever um so it's something that a lot of people don't really think about and i'm especially people who are drunk they're sure shit not thinking about that so josh says this guy robert no clue who this guy is came running up from behind jumps in the air and keep and kicks keith in the back Keith's head slammed into my face from being kicked into me, and even though it wasn't his fault, all of my anger was directed towards him. I took out that anger on Keith in a physical manner. I kicked him about three to five times in the upper torso and face, which is brutal. That's That can really fuck someone up, and in this case it did. Steve Mateus, who is the other guy I will talk about later on, uh, also began kicking him. Josh says he told Steve to stop which he did. Um, Keith, at this point, was unconscious, but alive, supposedly. None of us knew he had this pre-existing brain injury and was dying. We, lo- we thought he just got KO'd. An hour later, cops show up. Uh, all these guys split. They didn't think any of it. They didn't find out till the next day that Keith had died. Uh, Josh was arrested three weeks later after the incident. So this is where he kind of clears up what happened. Danny hadn't gotten sucker punched by Keith. Danny was the one who sucker punched Keith. And then some guy turned around and punched Danny. So that's kind of Keith's whole recollection of it. It's interesting because Danny Way has a different story that is... That is very conflicting to this one. And uh, I will pull that up in a minute here. All right. So this is the interview with Danny Way, uh, Chromeball Incident. So they ask him about what happened that night. And uh, Danny Way's answer is, his side of the story is pretty simple and straightforward. Uh, He was not present that night, is what he says. Nor was he involved. Uh, supposedly there's a bunch of witnesses that know that I don't have a first-hand account of the scene that took place because I was not present I cannot comment on something that I didn't witness which is very good advice from a lawyer that's very conflicting obviously with with Josh Swindle's story because Josh claims that Danny Way actually uh, punched Keith Ogden that night outside the bar uh, which one could argue kind of started this whole thing obviously Danny wasn't found guilty or even convicted of anything for this um i guess there was an investigation obviously danny way was cleared so you know there's that but also mistakes can be made in the justice system uh believe it or not the justice system is not perfect it doesn't always work which is uh crazy i know but that's how it is it's weird because I don't really have, I don't have a reason to not believe what Josh Swindle is saying just because he has already served, he already served his time. He was, he was found guilty. He was convicted. He already did his prison time. He doesn't really have a reason to lie about it unless he has some sort of personal vendetta against Danny Way. I'm not sure what their relationship is now. I'm sure that they're not really in contact anymore because of it whatever but it just seems a little weird that these this two stories are just complete opposites of each other right clearly clearly someone's lying and uh we don't really know who we probably never will really but it is interesting nonetheless and it's something that i wanted to uh wanted to bring up now the other person involved that i want to talk about is a guy named uh steve mateus he was also uh, convicted of, I believe it was voluntary manslaughter. So he got a lighter sentence than Josh Swindle, but that's because it was a plea deal 
where Steve Mateus would agree to plead guilty and in turn testify against Josh Swindle. And then he would uh, receive a lighter sentence. Steve Mateus was charged with was charged with murder, but he pleaded guilty to voluntary manslaughter in return for a six-year sentence. As part of the plea deal, he testified against Swindle, saying that he saw Swindle <laughs> lead Ogden out of the bar, kick him three to five times in the face. I've looked all over. I tried to find the the, the case, but it doesn't seem like uh, it's anywhere to be found. So. We'll kind of just have to take it based off of uh, interviews and news articles and whatnot. But what's interesting, though, is that Steve Mateus is uh, now the director of sports marketing for Rockstar Energy, which is wild. So that's where he ended up. He's doing good for himself. So I just wanted to talk about this a little bit. Uh, if anybody has more information about this um, I'd be glad to look at it because it is interesting that it was kind of just swept under the rug a little bit not to say that Danny did anything wrong because like I said um, there was a full criminal investigation that found him innocent of any wrongdoing um, and there was you know supposedly witnesses that night that say that Danny Way wasn't involved but all the stories are a little conflicting and they're all kind of different so it's hard to say the purpose of this video isn't to cancel Danny Way or anything like that um, I just wanted to kind of cover it a little bit because it is an interesting story and it is uh, shitty what happened that night to Keith Ogden. It's unfortunate. They got kind of light sentences, in my opinion. It seems like six years and 19 years is pretty lenient as far as murder goes. But, you know, I'm not a fucking lawyer. I'm not a fucking judge. So it is what it is. Um, thanks for watching and goodbye.